stop thinking of it as a dirty word. Accountability. Accountability in any organization is important. You need to know who is responsible for particular activities, who is responsible for activity tasks. If something needs to be done, you need to know who to go to to get that done. That is what accountability essentially is. Most organizations have this negative connotation around accountability, and it's about blaming someone for when things go wrong, blaming someone when things are not done on time. But accountability, in actual fact, holds everyone to a level of, or a standard and a level that everyone expects to achieve within an organization. Accountability is critical. Through the EOS system, Entrepreneurial Operating System, one of the tools that we use when we work with organizations to get them to grow and scale and to ensure that everyone is working in the same direction, so we've got all boats, everyone heading in the same direction, is an accountability chart. We sit down with organizations and we go through with them, working through who is the right person for the right seat on the bus. And we use an accountability chart to develop the roles that needs to be filled within an organization. So developing accountability within your organization takes time, it takes the right tools, and it takes the right mindset and frame of mind, and that needs to be shared across the entire organization. I'm gonna share with you a couple of ways that you can develop accountability within your organization. So the first thing is to be reliable and consistent, right? So you as the business owner, as the business leader, as the entrepreneur needs to set the standard, you need to set the example. So you need to be reliable, you need to be consistent. If you are reliable and consistent, then your team members are gonna mirror that and then they are going to become reliable and consistent. And when you develop out your accountability chart, you develop out what are the roles for each position on your accountability chart, then that expectation is a given. It's, it's actually something that is just uh, a standard that everyone is gonna be reliable and they're gonna deliver consistent results based on what is their role and occupation within the company. The second thing that you need to do is communicate the expectations clearly, right? So don't assume anything. Right? Most people make assumptions and assumptions leads to failures. Right? You need to communicate what is expected of them. So again, having a detailed um, job description. And when we work through an accountability chart with our uh, clients, it's usually five main roles or responsibilities for each position in the organization. So what are the five most important things that this person is expected to do as part of their role. And if that is clearly communicated with them and shared with them, then of course, they're gonna be able to hold themselves accountable and be able to produce the results that you need in that position as well. Thirdly, most importantly, is you've gotta be able to empower your employees, empower your staff members. Make sure that they have enough autonomy, they have enough leeway and flexibility and you're not micromanaging them you're empowering them to do those five key roles or, or be responsible for those five key roles that you've given them as part of your accountability chart so at the end of the day you want to turn accountability into something that people aspire to and they strive towards they look you know they are not scared of the word they're not afraid that they're going to be blamed when things are not done on time or things are not done properly. You want to create that uh, freedom and flexibility around that as well. And when, when you do that, you then create collaboration because when people are uh, empowered and they know they are responsible for a particular role, then they are possibly gonna reach out and share some of the activities. They might delegate some of their roles with some of the staff members that um, uh, they are responsible to as well. And you'll find that your teams are no longer going to be competing because everyone's not going to be afraid of being responsible and uh, fingers are not going to be pointed at them if things are not going to be done. They're actually going to collaborate more. They're going to work more cohesively. They're going to reach out to each other. They're going to try and solve problems, not only in their division, but across the company as well. And that is where this accountability and the power of 
um, developing accountability in your organization, um, the power that it has when you get it right and you do it properly as well. Lastly, also what accountability does for your organization, it creates this learning environment. So all your team members are actually learning from each other. They're learning from, uh, uh, you know, their customers um, and, and other team members as well. So accountability means that you've got to go out and also, you know, not you might not be the expert in your particular field, but you, you've got to go out and reach out and learn new skills or, you know, speak to someone else that knows uh, a bit more about that for you. So accountability at the end of the day is not about pointing fingers and, and putting the blame on other people. It's about fostering this uh, environment within your organization where people feel empowered. People are, uh, they, they know what their roles are. They know what is expected of them. They collaborate with their team members to achieve the outcomes and the vision of the company, as opposed to working in silos, as opposed to, you know, taking credit for things that I, that they do and, you know, um, stealing that credit away from, from other people as well. And that's what accountability at the end of the day is. Your role as a business leader, as the entrepreneur, is to develop this accountability within your organization. And we can certainly help you um, do that using the EOS system. As I mentioned, we use the accountability chart. It's one of the tools in the EOS system that helps you identify the right person for the right seat on that proverbial bus. We also use another tool called GWC, where you can identify that your staff member gets the role, they want to do that role, and they also have the capacity to do that role. So those are two important tools that we teach and show you how to use as part of the EOS system. And that is only in one component, the people component of the EOS system. So if you'd like to know a bit more about how we can help you implement EOS in your organization, hit the button below to schedule a call with me and I look forward to speaking with you soon.